Would you want to live to the age of 120 if you were healthy? What about preventing type 1 diabetes before it ever strikes? CBS 2's Dr. Max Gomez says that both may be possible and they are being worked on by scientists as described in a Vatican conference that he helped organize and moderate. This is the fifth International Vatican Conference this year, all virtual. For three days, more than 100 global leaders in science, faith, medicine, and technology are discussing the latest breakthroughs in medicine, healthcare delivery and prevention, as well as the human implications and cultural impact of technological advances. One of the high interest sessions deals with a very active research area, anti-aging or longevity. We can really achieve what we're trying to, uh, living healthy until 120. But that's not a desirable goal for many people if 120 means poor health, disability and dementia. The good news is that for the first time, science is focusing on aging as an objective itself so that both lifespan and health span are increased. If we target aging, then we delay diseases and we live healthier. And so if we delay disease and live healthier, we'll also live longer. Researchers have identified several drugs that appear to restore some of the cellular processes of our youth. They include metformin, rapamycin, and NAD. But until they're available as anti-aging drugs, we can mimic their effects. Run a little, move, lift weights, uh, eat less often, eat the right foods, and then your body responds and fights against deterioration. Another exciting area of research is what used to be called juvenile diabetes, now known as type 1. Not just for treatment, but actual prevention. We now have ways to be able to predict and detect early who may be heading in that direction by measuring autoantibodies that are relevant to type 1 diabetes. Researchers from Sanford Health and supported by the Helmsley Charitable Trust have launched the PLEDGE study to identify children with these antibodies and then test ways to keep full-fledged type 1 diabetes from developing. We are trying to assess if oral insulin, for example, can prevent type 1 diabetes. The scientific, ethical, and religious insights from the conference are open to all simply by registering through the Cura Foundation. Go to cbsnewyork.com for a link. Dr. Max Gomez, CBS 2 News. And that conference, by the way, continues for the next two days. So if you are interested in more information, like Dr. Max said, log on, cbsnewyork.com.